any techniques that you do on the head, you, one thing you can think about is the raising clear yang up. Clear yang is where you get the clarity of mind to process and think and, and remember and study. Uh, so that's one thing that you could think about. And any techniques in the liver and gallbladder are probably going to be good for moving machine as well. I think we also talked about a, a, a technique for the, the liver and twin out. Well, it's on the side, so you put your hands on your head and rub the sides to get the liver. We talked about that one. Okay, thank you. And so those are some specific points and specific channels that you could think about incorporating into your, to your work. In fact, you could just do the routine just with that. But that's enough information for you to have a whole 15 minute session without any trouble at all. But we'll give you some other tools and techniques to kind of work with so you can uh, practice and expand some of your uh, stuff that you're doing. Okay, any questions so far? Mostly review, right? Things you guys already pretty, pretty, know, pretty, pretty much know. Okay. Okay, so um, why don't we take this opportunity while we have them sure to look at rolling. Rolling is a, always a challenging technique for everybody to do. Remember, rolling comes with two kinds. There's dragon rolling and phoenix rolling. So we'll look at dragon rolling. Dra <coughs> dragon rolling uses from the palm to the back of the hand, primarily as your surface that you're going to do the technique from. And from this position, it's going to be hard to get a full stroke, at least for me. It's hard to get a full stroke. So it may look a little different when I do this on the chair versus if I was going to do it with her laying down. Also, as you come up the neck, you have to modify. You can't get a stroke because your wrist, more so you hit her in the head. And unless you're boxing, that's not ideal. So you do have to change. And you guys might have seen either me or Boonshai do a technique up here that was really just on the pinky. You guys have seen that? So this is technically rolling, but it doesn't really look like the actual technique. So just be aware of that. How's the pressure? Good. And you can do rolling up and down the ESGs, all up the cross the traps into the neck, right from your position here. Although it is challenging to get down too far on the UV channel when you're doing this while you're standing, but you need that a little bit. And generally it's a pretty good feeling technique. Two more variations of, of the stretches up here that are easy to get to. So one I'm going to use my palms, and it kind of depends on, um, it's not one is better or more right or wrong than the other, just two different ways of doing it. One is I'm going to put my palm heel, we call it the palm heel here at the bottom of the palm, right about GB21, and I'm going to press down. Do you feel a little stretch? Mm -hmm. 
hold for 10 or 15 seconds. Yeah, right off GB21. Now, when you relax from these kind of stretches, it, generally I find that it's more comfortable to ease off the pressure instead of just popping your hands up off the pressure. So you kind of want to ease down and then ease up a little bit more uh, better for the patient. And then another way to do it is to use my forearms. Same, same stretch. The load is to get down at the level, I spread my stance. You guys know about horse stance? You guys heard that before? So basically adopting a horse stance and I'm going to press down. You'll want to use this if the patient is a lot bigger than you. Give you a little bit more leverage and pressure to put on. Do you feel stretched? Mm -hmm. So it's traps for stretching? Or neck? Neck, traps, depends on what's tight. And it depends on how you, how you keep your hands. And then I'll show you another variation that's specifically for the neck. I might have shown some of you guys this before. I'm going to keep my right hand, or my right uh, forearm, on her right shoulder trap area. I'm going to put my left elbow um, on the left side, and then I'm going to take my left palm and put it on her head. I'm going to grab the right side of her head with my left fingers, and I'm going to push down with my right, and at the same time I'm going to pull with my left. Now go very slow, and communicate with the patient, ask them, hey, tell me when you feel a stretch. Too much? And then slowly let it off, and you'll switch. Now put your right hand on top of the head, put your left forearm, push down and pull, and check in with your patient. You feel strength. done some things to warm it up and relax it. We've done some stretches in there. Now we can get in there and do some more work. So I'm going to go back to clenching, clenching it with the pads. Try to have something clever to do with your left hand, even if it's just holding a static point, just to, so you are getting as much body work out of it as you can. And now I'm clenching up and down on the side of the right row on each hand. With your thumb and either just your index finger or your index finger and your middle finger together, you're going to put it at GB20. Guys know GB20? It's where these guys attach here. You see? So you've got the occipital protrusion. There's your uh, vertebra. And if you go halfway between, you know, San Jose and me? So halfway in between, on either side. That's where we're going to, so you're going to put your thumb and your fingers in the center. I'm going to turn around so they can kind of see. I'm going to put those guys right. You make like a ledge. You should be able to feel a ledge there. I'm going to stabilize with my other hand, and I'm going to push up into those guys. So the only pushing happens from my right hand. This hand is just stabilizing. Well, I don't want them to come up off the chair, basically. But what you want to move forward or whatever. You feel mm -hmm. something happen in there? Yeah. Too much? Is this a space? Yeah. Could be. You be 10, you be 20. And then you push it up. So it's pretty close to you be 10. Yeah. Do you push it up? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Well, it'll depend. It'll depend on. So you want her head to be erect, and so I'm pushing mostly up, but maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit diagonal. Does that open open up more than just going like this? It's the same. Just to, but she's uh, that one. You have to kind of be 
um, laying on the table. This is kind of the same thing, but she's you know, seated. And because of, because I'm, so the other thing about that one is that's more like passive. You're letting gravity put the weight on mm -hmm. of their head into your fingers. This one, I'm not using gravity, I'm using my own strength. So I can put more force here than I can when she's just on the table. 